All right, so I'm here with Brittany. Brittany, how old are you? I'm 37. Are you originally from Arizona? No, Michigan. What brings you out here to Phoenix? I came out here when I was really, really young, so I didn't have a choice. <laughs> and what's your current situation right now? Are you homeless? Yes. I have never been homeless a day in my life. Um, I never thought that I'd be in this situation. Um, it's me and my mom. I do have a son. I did drop him off with his father because he doesn't deserve to be out here like this. Um, I will get him back, you know, when I get a place. Uh, I don't know, it's hard. <laughs> it's really, really hard. Um, a lot of people are homeless. A lot of people have a story. Um, how we long, need more help. How long have you been on the streets for now? Um, almost a year. Almost a year. Wow. And what do you do out here to survive? Sometimes I have to still, still to make sh sure my mom eats, I eat. These people, they won't help and they look at us like we're shit. Like, I'm sorry. They tell you to go in the shelter and the shelters aren't any better. <laughs> you have people, people donating so much money in different programs out there, but they're not really using everything they could to help us, you know? <sighs> so you're out here on the streets with your mom? Yeah, my son is with his father. I would never put him through this, ever. <laughs> Where do you guys stay at? Do you guys stay at shelters? Or well, do you guys have a tent we had or a tent like underneath the freeway, a tent. Um, you know, if the police come sometimes and they move us around, but um, other than that, we've been in a tent for a while. I do have a voucher, but most of the places are either filled up or there's no, nothing until months down the line or a waiting list, you know. Where did you get your voucher from, Cass? Um, it was when we were in UMOM. They gave us a voucher home for Home Inc., I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, um, my mom is on a fixed income. She does get disability. I'm looking for work, but it's hard when you when you don't have stability. You know what I mean. So, before you ended up out here on the streets, what kind of work were you doing? Um, I worked for Medicare Insurance, um, United Healthcare, uh, CVS. Um, most of my jobs jobs were customer service with uh, healthcare or insurance, and um, you know these people that I help out here, you know, act like they were my friends and they really took everything from me, you know, literally, uh, one by one, including our car. So it's really hard, you know, to start over. So you had a car when we you did. first came out here on the streets? We had a car, yeah. And what happened to it? Um, a friend of mine, uh, I thought she was my friend, she stole it and sold it for a trailer. Um, it's not that easy to just go and get a car or make the money for a car, you know, like, we just had it, we only had it for like a month or two. <sighs> That's the sucky part. So you say you had a voucher right now? Yeah. To get housing? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what, you can't find a, an apartment right I now? cannot find, it's hard, it's just been hard to find anything. It's either above our, you know, the amount to pay or there's a waiting list or they're booked out and you have to keep calling back to check, calling back to check.
Does that voucher work at any apartments, or does it have to be certain? It has certain to, ones. As long as the the uh, management takes the voucher, you know, works with them, then we can move in. How how does the cops treat you out here? How does law enforcement treat you out here? Um, some of them are nice, and some of them just. You know, treat us like shit, like we're scum, nothing, you know. Some of the people treat us like that the same way. Um, it's hard for me to ask for anything, you know. I've always went and got it myself. I'm very independent. Um, Is it dangerous out here in the streets? Yeah, they steal everything. <laughs> so you have to be careful, like... I don't know how many times we had to start over, you know. Um, you can't really trust anybody. It's hard. It's very hard. What's one of the worst experiences you've had being out here on the streets? Mm. I would say... You know, the stealing and the people that are out here, they're doing drugs, you know, and the blues, yeah, they're taking over a lot, but the meth is what's driving people insane, you know, and, and changing their mind frame of who they are as a person. You may have one person that never done it in their life and start doing it, and that person can go and just kill someone because they had a voice in their head telling them to or something, you know, it, that's crazy. It's like, how, how, like, how, how could that happen? This person was never like that. They is, think that. Is that why you see like people out here talking to themselves and mm -hmm. doing all those, those weird movements and pretty much tweaking out? Yeah. It's either that so it's or, it's either that or someone has given them, they've got, you know, may have gotten a bad batch or, or something, you know. Um, they might shoot up and, and it's not any good, however that is. And it could change a person's whole life, just one little hit, you know. Do you mess with any substances right now? I used to opiates. Okay. Um, and it all started at the doctor's. <laughs> You know, you got these doctors treating you like a guinea pig and, you know, just giving you any and every, try this, try that. Well, you know, you need this, you need that. And I was hooked on that for years, for years, a very long time. How'd you manage to get off of it? Um, I ended up going to a detox in Tucson. Um, I went there for about five or six days. I wanted to also see other people and how they um, are on it and, and how much they consume and how bad I am, you know, just compare a little bit how bad I am. I thought I was bad, but I, you know, there's people in there that were taking a hundred, can go through a hundred in two days. I can barely, like, <laughs> that's way too much for me. And I thought I was bad off, but I wasn't, I wasn't. And it's really a mind thing, you know what I'm saying? It's all in your mind. You know, it's telling you that you need this and you need that, and, and it's not, you don't. You can fight it. You can. It, it, it's, <sighs> you gotta be strong enough too, you know? Um, a lot of people are content with where they're at because they've been where they're at so long that that's what they're used to. They don't think that they deserve better or that there is better. You know, the family turned on them or they don't have anyone, you know. Um, <laughs> this is a crazy world we live in. <laughs> yeah, it is. If we have any younger viewers and they're thinking about trying substances or running the streets, what kind of advice would you give them? I would say not to try any <laughs> substances. Um, it can mess up your entire life within minutes, hours, you know, days. Um, hell, you can lose your life um, right away, just from the first hit. 
um, you don't know. You know, you don't know what these people are putting in them. You don't know how strong the next one is. You just don't know. Um, so not knowing is, is, I would hope is enough to, to put it down or, or say be the cool kid and the leader and say that no, no to drugs and you don't want it. You do not want it. All right, Brittany. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I really do appreciate it. Are you okay with me using this on my YouTube channel? Yes. And just in case some of my subscribers want to reach out to you with any sort of help or donations, do you have any contact information that you want to share? Yes. Um, my email is Brittany, B-R-I-1-T-N-E-Y-B-187 at gmail.com. All right, Brittany. Thank, thank you. you.